Hey everybody, it's Jordan here again with another video from Major Hi-Fi. This week we've got a new release from Ferrum with the Erzo second generation. Ferrum is a Polish company that burst onto the scene back in 2020 with the Hypsos and they've uh, released several other DAX and amps in the high-end area that have been really good. Now the Erzo is kind of their entry point to their products um, as a DAC amp. So it, like I said, it's a DAC, it's an amp. Uh, it comes in at about $17.95. And we're going to break down everything from its sound to its functionality and everything in between. So let's hop into it. In the box, you get the Erzo second generation DAC amp, a power supply, a USB-C to USB-A cable, and a quick start guide. The Erzo second generation follows the original Erzo's design as well as pretty much the design language of all of Ferrum's audio offerings. This means it's got a black metal chassis with an orange logo area on the left side of the front plate. To the right of that is your input selector as well as your gain switch and a nice high quality volume pot. The build is really good. It feels very sturdy like it's going to last a long time and it's nice and compact. Ferrum builds this as desktop high-end, and I think that's a perfect way to sum up the build of this. It's nice and compact, it'll fit on your desk. It's a DAC and it's an amp, so I think this is a really nice package that you can put pretty much anywhere. I should also mention that with the Ferrum logo, it does glow, uh, as well as there's an indicator for what type of file you're playing. The logo can have its brightness adjusted and turned off, so if you don't like that big bright Ferrum logo, um, you can adjust that. Finally on the front panel is your quarter inch jack as well as your 4.4 balance jack. So you've got multiple options for plugging in your headphones. On the back are RCA and XLR analog outputs as well as RCA, USB, coaxial, and optical inputs for the DAC. The Erzo 2 is compatible with USB Type-C. Also on the back is a potentiometer bypass switch, so that way you can use it with powered speakers, for example, or any situation where you'd want to use the source to control the volume rather than the amp. Finally, there's a DC power in as well as an input for the power supply Hypsos. This is a proprietary power cord, so that port's there right above the DC port. With that, there's also a cable port for triggering on and off the device with Hypsos. The Erzo second gen is a discrete IC design amplifier that is truly balanced. Among its updates from the first generation are a better performing IV stage. Ferrum also aims to have the Erzo 2 compete with Wandla in terms of performance due to its improved DAC chip and DSP engine, as well as its DDF preferred HQ appetizing digital filter. Maximum resolution has also been improved to PCM 768 kHz and DSD 512. Now, since the Erzo second gen is billed as desktop high-end, I wanted to try this with a range of different high-end headphones, namely the Abyss Diana MR, the Focal Clear MG, and the new Meze Lyric 2. Now, before I break down how the amp sounded with each of these headphones, I do want to give you a general overview of what the sound of this amp is like. Now, this device is very proficient at retrieving detail, but it doesn't do it in a way where it, you know, heightens the treble response or does anything to the sound that colors it in any way. It's really natural and transparent, but it does bring that detail out. So performance will also vary depending on your recording quality and the choice of headphones you have. In my testing with different headphones, I found that the character of the amp followed the character of the headphones and the recording, which means that this is really transparent and really resolving, and I found that really impressive. So I started my listening with the Abyss Diana MR, and the first thing I noticed is that separation is really impressive here. So especially in the bass area, I heard great separation between the kick drum and the bass guitar. Um, things sounded really natural um, and really neutral, but everything was given the proper space to stay separated and you could hear the intricacies of each instrument. Then in a song like Not by Beirut, I was really impressed by the microdynamics and micro detail retrieval. There's a lot going on in that song and you could hear the different pressure between notes being hit and it was really cool to hear. On the top end, I didn't notice any harshness or any raised uh, treble frequencies. Everything was still balanced and neutral and natural while all this detail was coming out. Then I plugged in the Focal Clear MG, which uh, is a little bit easier to drive, but I did notice that going between the Diana MR and the Focal Clear MG, as well as the Lyric 2, uh, 
you can put anything into this amplifier and you're not going to get noise. It's completely dark in the background. So it's quiet and it's also high powered and it can power different levels of headphones with ease. Now, as far as the actual sound got with the Focal Clear MG, I noticed a more dynamic, maybe a more punchy bass response and a more forward mid-range as well. And I think that's just the character of the Clear MG coming through. Um, and what I think this means is, like I said earlier, it's really transparent and it's allowing you to hear the true character of your headphones and the quality of your recording as well. So this amp isn't going to add new sound characteristics. The, the goal of the amp is to be transparent, like it's not even there. Like you're in the room with the music, not listening through a system at all. And what's really cool about that is that this device will never bottleneck your system. It will take you as far as you're willing to go in your audiophile journey. So with all of that in mind, that's why I wanted to choose the Lyric 2, um, because it has a really unique sound signature. It has a wide sound stage. Um, it's a really interesting headphone, and this was proven to be completely true when listening with the Erzo second gen. Bass was punchy, mids were smooth, and there was a crisp high end. Um, and the soundstage, like I expected, was nice and wide. On a track like Overlord by Dirty Projectors, detail was incredible. I could hear each vocal harmony layer independently if I wanted to. You could really listen into the track and find all these details, and it was really nice to listen to. Now, listening with the Lyric 2 is where I noticed the impressive technical capabilities of the amplifier. Being a closed back headphone, you do get your limitations on soundstage and kind of that compressed type of sound people talk about. I don't find that to be the case with the Lyric 2 with any amplifier and DAC I've tried, but in this scenario, I found soundstage to be really wide and imaging to be really accurate. That said, it won't go into that true top of the line high end sound you can get where your everything's in its own really unique space and you can hear everything where it's exactly supposed to be. It's still really good, but there are rungs above still. Overall, the Erzo second gen is really impressive and it's hard to think of another product in this price range that can do everything it does at the quality it does. So tying it all together, the Erzo second generation is a really great product. We're going to give it major hi-fi silver. I really enjoyed this product. I don't think it transcends the price range, but at the price range that it's at, there are very few products that compete with it. Um, you get great detail with a natural sound and a really great sense of transparency that you don't hear every day on an amplifier. There's no embellishments. There's no coloration of the sound. It's your headphones, your recordings as they are. So with that in mind, we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. This has been Jordan with Major Hi-Fi. Definitely like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time with another video.